There's a verse in the Bible that says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient path. Ask for the good way and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. We're walking the ancient paths and lands of the Bible. We're looking for secrets along the way that can give us that rest for our souls. But these secrets aren't hidden at all. They're actually in plain view. So come with us as we walk the ancient paths and find truth for living for today. When Jesus met the disciples along the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee, he said, follow me. When they decided to follow, they never knew exactly where Jesus was going to take them. But one day Jesus took them north. They began to walk and they followed the Jordan River and they just kept going and going 40, 45 miles until they finally reached a destination that I believe none of them had ever anticipated visiting. For Jesus had brought them to Caesarea Philippi. When Jesus and the disciples finished their journey, they were here at the very beginning point of the Jordan River. The Bible says it like this, that Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. And that's where we are. You know, even today you can see the niches and carved out places, even the pedestals that, uh, that held the pagan idols that were here. Now we see the evidences of that in the ruins. But when Jesus and the disciples were here, they saw it in its full-blown activity. This place was as far away as you could get from Jerusalem physically, but it was also as far away spiritually as you could get from the temple in Jerusalem. Now it's pretty obvious when the Greeks and the Romans got here, the niches and the places, the pedestals that they had around carried the architecture that's common for them in other areas of the world. They liked this place because it already had a history. Before Alexander conquered this area, the pagan cults of Pan and Baal and Asherah were, were very common here. Now there was a belief that the deities lived underground. And this cave, this mysterious hole, was a, a place that led to those deities. Now there's something about this cave that we can't see today that they could see. See, an earthquake about 200 years ago knocked enough of the rock down that it blocked off the water that came from here. But actually, when Jesus and the disciples saw this place, the Jordan River beginning came out of the underground water source, out of this cave. It was a very mysterious place of eternal water, eternal life, as they like to say, and it was dark. And so they would sacrifice the animals as a part of their pagan cult religions and throw the animals in. If the animals disappeared, they had a belief that the gods had accepted those animals, those sacrifices. But if blood appeared in the water, the sacrifices had been rejected. and Therefore, another one had to be thrown into the cave. Now that's, I guess, the stuff of history books and textbooks and world religion. But for the days of Baal and Asherah, there were also seasons of time during the worst of it when child sacrifice was a part of the practice. And to me, that makes this place one of the most repulsive places in all Israel. Oh, there's one more thing. This place went by another name. Before the Greeks and the Romans got here, because of the belief that the deities lived underground in the winter, they called it the Gates of Hades. You know, Jesus came all the way to Caesarea Philippi with his disciples to ask them two questions. And the first question was, who do people say that I am? Well, they gave him some answers. People said he was a great prophet. Elijah, that's a great compliment. John the Baptist, perhaps. But the second question was what brought Jesus to this area. That's why he walked those disciples all the way up here. What about you, he said. Who do you say that I am? Simon spoke up first. He stepped away from the crowd and crossed all the lines. He said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Not these pretend gods, these rock gods, these ridiculous gods. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you know what? On this rock, I'll build my church. On this rock, I will build my church. And now I know Simon Peter is an important leader in church history and among the disciples. And, and I know the confession of faith that he made was critically important, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
but come back to that location 2,000 years ago and see where they were. Understand that when Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not stand against it. They were here, where the gates of Hades are, where all this rock is, where all these different places of worship were. I think he was saying, you know, guys, I don't think they ever expected us to come up here in the first place. As a matter of fact, I don't think you expected to come up here. But here we are, and we're not going away. We're going to change our world, not by building buildings and holding some kind of safe gathering points, but by actually getting out in the community and changing those communities through the teaching of Christ, through imitating Jesus. It was quite a challenge. You know, that little group of disciples followed the instructions. They made a lot of mistakes along the way, but before it was over, they had changed the entire world. I'm Andy Cook for the Christian Television Network.